Hi, welcome back. Welcome to this four court film for our absolutely stunning 2016 Audi Q5. Uh, this is the three litre TDI model. Uh, it's also the S Line Plus. So the absolute top of the range um, for uh, for this generation of Q5 before you get to things like the SQ5. Um, the condition is absolutely stunning. The, the mileage is actually slightly higher than we would normally have on this one. It's done 83,000 miles. Um, however, it's been exceptionally well cared for. Uh, has has um, obviously just done a fair bit of sort of motorway mileage um, over the last couple of years. But essentially, it looks like there was only ever one occupant in the car. Um, the uh, the interior and everything like that is in absolutely um, stunning condition. So I'll talk you around the car, um, show you some of the features and specification that this particular car has got, uh, and just sort of highlight any any minor blemishes um, to you, so that you're aware of the overall condition. So um, the colour is Daytona grey. It's an absolutely beautiful colour. Very very nice finish to it. Um, the car's been machine polished and um, is uh, barely showing uh, any sort of signs of, of wear. Even things like stone chips, really. Again, when you consider the mileage, but there's only just a couple um, dotted around the car. Certainly nothing excessive at all. It's actually just starting to rain now, which is pretty bad. So we'll try and whiz around quite quickly. Um, the front bumper is completely free of any marks or scuffs or scratches or anything like that. Um, even lower down, where they often get um, get marks, um, there's really barely anything to um, to sort of point out. Again, a bit more sort of stone chipping just down there, as you'd expect, um, but certainly nothing excessive at all. Um, all four wheels are finished in this absolutely beautiful titanium sort of matte finish. Um, again, all um, unmarked and perfect. All the way down the side, no marks. You can tell that the car's not been spending time in car parks and things like that. There's no, um, no scratches to the side or chips to the door edges or anything. Another perfect wheel there. Um, if we come around to the back, um, again, very, very nice. You get tiny, tiny little grazes and things like that. It's so, so small um, and really nothing to get too excited about. Um, and round to the back, not even like loading scratches or anything like that on the back. Really, really good. <clears throat> um, I think if we come down to this section here, there's a tiny little bit just there, small dent that's just, um, just pushed into the plastic. But again, only visible when you go really close up to it. Round to this side, all good, another perfect wheel. And all the way down the passenger side, completely free of any marks or blemishes. Um, when I first looked at this car, um, I was absolutely convinced that it had only done about 30,000 miles. And um, it really is very much in the sort of condition, you, you wouldn't be disappointed if the car had done 30,000 miles in terms of the way that the condition is. Um, mirror housing and things like that, all free of marks. And yeah. Nothing on the roof to show you or anything like that at all. So really, really straight um, and uh, very, very well looked after. Um, we've got an electric tailgate on the car. And we'll just open it up here. Boot area, area has all been well, well looked after. You've got um, storage luggage nets and things like that in the back there. Uh, that's the switch up there for the electric tailgate. We've got privacy glass all the way around. And if we look in the back, again, you just see just how nice this is. All the stitching and everything like that, all beautifully in place. Really, it's hardly anywhere to show you at all. A couple of very small marks to the seat backs just there. And probably, by the look of it, there would have, would have been a child seat installed here. And maybe just a few kick marks from, from a child sat in the back, but certainly, again, nothing excessive. You've got this stunning Alcantara um, that finishes all the doors off and all the extended leather on the doors um, with the stitching and everything like that as well. Um, but it's absolutely lovely. Got the open sky panoramic roof, which is a really nice option. There's absolutely no rattle or anything like that to this um, when it drives. You don't get any wind noise or anything like that, um, which you often do get on some of the older ones, but uh, this one's in very, very good condition and order and again just look at the leather on here there's just no wear to it at all even things like the driver's bolster which has done 80, you know had 83,000 miles worth of wear it's just hardly anything to uh, to mention there at all same with the center console you always get the tiny little pot marks and things like that on these but again it's not excessive at all Again, I've seen cars with a quarter of this mileage with more wear on them. Uh, nice option in here, we've had the uh, Bang & Olufsen sound system upgrade. Um, the engine bay has all been completely detailed. 
uh, and again looks absolutely fantastic we've got a full Audi service history with this car and through to the front you've got your electric tailgate release electric mirrors and a windows and everything like that there and then the rain is starting now so we'll just jump in and we'll see the mileage at 83.650 you've got the beautiful flat bottomed chunky uh, s-line steering wheel again really nice condition all the leather and everything like this hasn't gone all nasty and shiny or anything um nice amount of stitching and everything like that all everything in place as it should be i know i keep banging on about it but certainly at this sort of mileage you don't normally tend to um, to find the interiors in in really great shape but this um this really is absolutely stunning so we'll start that up You'll see that all the warning lights and everything like that extinguish as they should. We've got the driver's information system. Um, we'll run things like your uh, current fuel economy, have a, things like a digital speedometer, satellite navigation instructions and things like that come up on this main screen here, as well as things like your um, uh, Bluetooth and uh, phone books, what radio station you're listening to, and all that kind of stuff. Um, also upgraded in here, brand new um, and quite an expensive version. I think it's an Auki, um, A-U-K-E. Why it's not showing up on the camera, but basically you've got full HD um, dash cameras to the front and the back on here. Um, very, very good system. I don't know a huge amount about dash cams and things like that, but that's all been professionally fitted and hardwired in, um, and uh, has a little screen on the front and everything like that as well, so you can see um, exactly what's going on. And it sh shows you the um, reverse one up in the, the top part. Um, just before the rain properly kicks off, I'll just show you the. Open sky roof opening. All works well as it should. And then we've got the blind at the back that comes across. All working nice and smoothly as it should. Really decent quality blinds and everything up like that up on there. Um, come down to the main screen over here. This is where you have all the things like your satellite navigation, infotainment, um, and uh, and stuff for your for your media settings and everything like that. Um, so we have DAB digital radio, which you'll see the, the link for here, as well as FM medium wave and long wave radio. Um, and then if we hit media, uh, we can go through to the different sources and just see exactly what you have. So we have um, the jukebox, which is basically an onboard storage hard drive for your music on here, um, so that uh, you can actually download CDs and things. Um, this next one is uh, SD card reader, so if we just come down to this multimedia system, you can pop that down here and we can actually put SD cards um, with, uh, with music uh, on and uh, that will work through there. We also have a DVD screen um, so we can watch movies um, and that's again the slot just down there. Uh, Audio music interface, in the glove box we have different connections depending on what, you, what device you have. That one's set up for a later generation uh, iPhone. And you've got a little parcel shelf sort of things that for putting the, your external devices in. Uh, the most popular one obviously is uh, is Bluetooth. That's what most people use. Um, so again, you've, you can just connect your phone straight to here and you can stream music um, from your playlists, from Spotify, from YouTube, um, uh, podcasts and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and then we also have a Wi-Fi connection, um, which I've never actually messed around with, but uh, it's always, um, Always appears on these um, on these Q5s of this sort of age. Um, I must admit, I haven't haven't played around with that before. Um, so that's your media parts. Obviously, we have Bluetooth for telephone as well. We have satellite navigation for the whole of Western Europe. Uh, you can actually on on these newer ones, you can actually put in full postcodes and things, which is a welcome addition. Um, but really lovely and easy to use. Nice uh, nice graphics and infotainment and stuff like that um, up on here come through to the car section and um, this car has been fitted with uh, drive select so it's um, switchable driving modes uh, depending on, on your use for the car um, they're all relatively self-explanatory um, anything from from uh, from sort of a, a lower power version for, for efficiency all the way up to a, a, more, a far sportier sort of dynamic drive and then you also have the individual button as well so you, we can come in here um, and and set uh, how the engine and gearbox feels um, and also the steering as well um, so that you can you can have that set up to your preference uh, we also then have a full 
uh, control panel for the car as well. Um, so if we pop into vehicle settings, you can make changes for things like exterior lighting. Uh, this is awesome if you're um, uh, traveling on the continent, where obviously they drive on the right-hand side of the road, um, rather than having to put beam bender uh, stickers and things like that on your headlights or, or paint them that yellow color. Um, you just simply arrive on the continent, come in here and make the change to the setting there and the, um, the headlights um, will convert to, uh, to for driving on the right um, for you and then you just set it straight back again when you get back to um, back to the UK and driving on the left hand side so a very very handy feature that one. Um, driving assistance uh, this is again just where you can set up for things like the, the sort of sound that your um, the, the parking system makes um, and uh, change it so you have a different frequency to the back and to the front so you know which one is working and when. Um, servicing and checks again this will just come through and tell us what our since service intervals are, um, so obviously relatively recently done. Uh, next door change is not due for just under a year um, uh, or 8,200 miles. So yeah, about 11 months or 8,200 miles. And then the next big inspection is due uh, in just under two years time or 18,200 miles, depending on what your usage is. Um, all the other bits and pieces we can change through here. But it's a really nice, simple layout, uh, simple to use all the menu systems and everything like that as well and obviously everything is set up through this main screen uh, coming down to here we have the uh, button we have the uh, front and rear parking sensors um, this one just uh, will show you which sensor is being used so if we just put the car into reverse let it roll backwards what you'll actually see is the rear parking sensors showing you which ones are getting closer um, I actually find this far more use uh, than a camera um, very very uh, good to use and um, will alert you if there's someone who's sort of left something behind the car or something when you're reversing out the driveway. Um, we have the hill descent mode uh, for, for use either off-road or um, very very useful in icy and snowy conditions as well just lets the vehicle do all of the braking for you um, when you're coming downhill. Uh, traction control on and off. Parking sensors I've shown you. Uh, automatic start stop um, so as part of the efficiency program the car will cut out at junctions and uh, when, you, when you come to a stop and then automatically start again as you drive off. We have three stage heated seats for driver and passenger, um, so hot, middle, not so hot and off, uh, and then also dual zone climate control for driver and passenger as well, so we have uh, separate temperature controls for those. And then we also, in the back, have additional vents um, for, for rear passengers, so really, really nice and easy to use, um, and, uh, and all everything in place there. Um, anything else to show you? We have electric handbrake on the car. Simply pull up to leave that on. Uh, the red light will come on. Uh, excuse the sound, but it is now absolutely pouring it down the rain. Who'd have thought it was the middle of May? Uh, again, foot on the brake and push that away to, to turn that off. And then we also have uh, hill um, uh, assistance as well. So basically, it's an automatic handbrake to stop you from rolling back on um, on hills. Um, other than that, come down, we have the movable armrest so that, that slides forwards and backwards. Uh, two decent sized cup holders pen holder and additional storage down here in the middle. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Again, being the S-Line you get this beautifully um, finished and embossed black leather Napa seats. Got a bit of water from uh, leaving the sunroof open. Um, yeah, really, really nicely finished. They obviously have the extendable sections that pull out down here um, and uh, multi adjustments But again, it's the fast, softer grade of leather. Uh, with the stitching and everything like that that continues all the way through it. So it's all very, very nice. Um, at this stage of the video, I would normally jump out and um, just talk you around the car again for the last time, but I think I'm not going to bother today. Um, so uh, all that remains to be said is um, thank you very much again for watching. If we can help with any further information, if you require any finance figures, if you have a part exchange to value uh, or anything like that, then please do let us know through our website, which is jhjarvis.co.uk. I'd be more than happy to help, um, and ultimately would uh, would love to be able to get you down for a test drive and show you the car in person. Uh, but yes, thanks very much again for watching, and we'll see you next time.